eight. This is Mr. Bainey, and we're gonna take a look at hey, what's up, Math One. And we're gonna take. Hello, this is Mr. Bainey. Let's take a look at lesson 18.1, sequences of transformations. Uh, so in this lesson, we're just gonna be combining the transformations that we learned in the previous module, module 17, and that is specifically the translations, rotations, and reflections. So if you're not comfortable with any of those three, right, you wanna go back and review those and practice those some more, uh, because that will be required for you to do the um, transformations in this lesson. So on page 887, let's just go straight to do an example. Um, number seven, I'll try this one out and then I want you to think about number eight. Uh, we're gonna draw the image of the triangle after the given combination of transformations. So when it says sequence of transformations or combination of transformations, that's the same thing just means that we're taking a pre-image and then we're gonna do more than one transformation to it. And uh, in this particular part of the lesson, where we're only doing rigid motion. That means we're only doing translations, reflections, and rotations. So number seven, we're gonna reflect across L and then we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees around P. So here we have two different um, transformations. We're going to reflect first, and then after that, we are going to um, rotate. All right, so we're going to reflect across L. So if I take, I'll try to do different colors here. Um, so point B reflecting across, right, it's going to look like that. And then point C reflecting across. If I just go across to the other side of line L, remember it's the same distance. Point A is three away. So if I go three away over here, right, that's gonna be my point A. So my image after the reflection is this figure. Sorry about my crooked line there. Um, that's just the first part. I'm not gonna label these points since this isn't our final image. Um, now I want to rotate P, sorry, I wanna rotate the triangle that I had in blue around point P. So that means um, that this is my center of rotation, so everything's gonna spin around it or rotate around it. Now it doesn't say which way. Remember that if it doesn't say which way, it is always counterclockwise, so it's gonna go around this way. Uh, I have a shortcut to doing this. Um, there's a lot of different ways. I'm not gonna show the actual motion of this. Uh, I, I recommend using a transparency. Um, you could also call point P your origin if you want. And <clears throat> I, you can actually draw like your X axis and your Y axis and then use your rule if you wanna do it that way. Um, you could also uh, kind of related to using the rule. Uh, the way I remember how to do it is, since I know it's only going 90 degrees, I know it's going to show up here somewhere. So that means I'm just going to go that way, right? So if I go to the right three times and I go up once, then here I'm going to go up three times and over once to the left. So it's there, right? To go from... Uh, my point P, I go over one, two, three, and up one, two, three, four. So from point P, I go up one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four. Right, so that's going to be my point. Uh, sorry, my point B. So the first one, I should be labeling this. This is my point C prime. This is B prime. Now to get to A prime. If I start at my center, I go over one, two, three, four, five, and up one. So I go up one, two, three, four, five, and over one right there. All right, the reason why I'm kind of like, I, I'm rushing through this, but if you remember the rule has you take your X and your Y and switch it. So instead of, I went to the right five times, 
right, to get to A. So I went to the right five times, which means I go up five times. So, all I, so this is the X, and that switched to become the Y. I went up instead, and that's how I sort of think about it. Okay, and there's our final image there in purple. Again, you see that I only labeled the points on the final image. So try number eight, go and pause it. I'm just gonna move along here and start explaining this right now. So pause it if you like. Uh, in number eight, we have, um, there's one transformation, then here's a second transformation, and here is a third transformation. So we got a lot going on here. So we're gonna translate along vector V. You remember the vector V tells us where to go and also how far to go. So vector V looks like it's going to the right two times and it's going up one. All right, so from point G, if I go right two and up one, there's my G. From E, right two and up one, there's E, and then F, right two, up one is this one. So here is my image after the first transformation. Okay, now in red, I'm gonna do the second one, 180 degree rotation. We're gonna rotate it around point P. I actually remember the rule for 180 degrees just because it's, it's just easier for me to remember. All we do is we go the opposite way of X and Y, right? We don't switch them at all. So for um, this point F right here, I went, um, or from P, I go right one, up one. So we go exactly backwards. So I go left one, down one, okay? Um, for this one, this is point G, where it moved to. So from P, I go left two, up two, going exactly the opposite way. I go right two and down two, and I get that. And finally, the very top point, that's my point E. Uh, from my center, I go left one, up three. So I'm gonna go right one, down three. And that will finish up our second transformation. Okay. And we're gonna uh, go through all this again, just to make sure I label all my points correctly. If you wanna label your points as we go, that's fine, but it's gonna clutter up your graph. Now we're gonna translate along U, vector U to be specific. This one, we're just going left three times, so that's negative three, and we're not going up or down at all. So we're just going to the left three times. There's my first point, my second point, and my third point. Just moved everything left three times. And let's finally label our points. Uh, so I'm just gonna follow along with where everything went. So G started here, it moved here, it rotated, and went here, and then moved here. So that's my G prime. Um, e prime is going to be the one closest to it, just just uh, because that's how it started. And everything here is rigid, right? So everything kind of stays the same in terms of its distance. Um, and then process of elimination, that last one has to be F prime. And there we go. Um, uh, just in terms of, you know, showing your work and, and all that when I'm looking at your thinking, um, because it's very possible that you make a mistake in your very first transformation. And then let's say you do everything else correctly, but because you made a mistake here means that your final image is probably going to be wrong. Um, you know, make sure you're showing those steps in between. Don't just go to the very final image. Um, you don't actually have to draw this blue and red one. If you're using the rules and you're writing the points like down to the side, that works as well. Um, you know, you can just pretend that P is the uh, origin you can draw your x-axis and your y-axis and then just kind of go from there. All right, so there are different ways to show your work, show your thinking along the way, right? Don't just say you're doing everything mentally. All right, moving on. Now we're gonna start combining non-rigid transformations and we do this in the form of using coordinate rules. So I'm not gonna actually do anything on this page, but you'll see here that in example A, um, you have all these coordinate rules. And we're gonna be doing this in just a moment. Uh, but these are, some of these will be rigid motions, but some of them aren't. At the top of page 889, let's do some of these. We're actually gonna finish off with these ones here. Um, because if you know how to do these, 
Uh, and you can think about them mentally. You can do the predicting part. I'm not going to actually go through that. Come and see me if you have additional questions. But for number 11, we have another sequence or a combination of transformations, right? Here's our first transformation. Here's our second one and our third one. Every time there's an arrow means it's going through a transformation. And X comma Y, this represents our pre-image here at the beginning. <clears throat> so one way you could actually go about doing this is to just apply the rules. So if I know like point B, for example, is the point two comma five. And we just go through and we just apply the rules to the two comma five. All right, so our first rule is we're gonna subtract one from X and subtract one from Y. Um, if you know how these rules work, right, that's actually a translation that's gonna be moving it left one and down one, you get one comma four. So we go right here. And then next is um, we're gonna do three times Y, sorry, three times X, and then Y stays the same. So three times one gives us that, and then Y is the same, is a four. Uh, so this actually is not a rigid motion. Multiplying the X by three is gonna make it wider Right? Remember, x goes left and right, so we're making it bigger that way. Um, so 3 comma 4 is going to be here, red. Um, and then in purple, I'll do the last one. Uh, this looks like um, negative x, negative y. It's just turning these negative. right? Or if they're already negative, it would turn them positive. Um, this is a rigid motion. If you recall, this is actually 180 degrees um, around the origin. So negative three comma four is here in purple. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do the rest of the work down here. Go ahead and pause it if you wanna try the rest of these. You would just take point A, apply the rules, then take point C, apply the rules. Okay, so um, I'll just kind of talk through it here. So point A is two, two. And the first one is gonna become one comma one. And the next one, multiply the x by three, so it's three comma one. And finally, make them negative because they're both positive, okay? And then point C is three comma two. Let's subtract one from each of those, so that's two comma one. Then multiply the x by three, so it's six comma one. And finally, they both become negative. Okay, let's uh, let's plot these points. So we got one comma one and two comma one. So here is my uh, first image, or after the first transformation. In red, I got three one and six one. You remember I mentioned that the three x made it wider. Right? It's actually the same height. It's still um, it's still this tall, right? Uh, but I made it wider. Okay, cool. And the final one, we got negative three, negative one, negative six, negative one. And it just took the red triangle and it rotated it 180 degrees. Right? So that's a rigid motion. So the blue one and the purple one are the rigid motions. The where it goes from blue to red that transformation is not rigid. Okay, so that's what we end up with. And we do want to label our final image with our A prime, B prime, C prime. Right, so A prime goes here, uh, B prime is down here, and C prime is at negative six, negative one. Okay, I'm gonna do number 12, um, and I'll do it off on my own, and it's gonna pop up here in a few, a few moments. Uh, if you want to go ahead and try that one out, okay, just pause it. And here's the solutions. Uh, I, I chose not to put down the coordinates, but I do have um, the the blue is after the first transformation. So going from my pre-image and doing the first transformation, you can see it's not rigid. It made it a little bit bigger. It also flipped it. So it, it does, it has the effect of this 
kind of making it a little bit wider. Um, and also, uh, it made it taller, but then it flipped it across the x-axis. So it made it bigger in all ways. And then um, taking that, the second transformation is a translation. So I took everything and I went left five and up four. Um, and so I chose not to write down the coordinates, but you can check the ones I have just to make sure they match. And that's it for this lesson. So there, are, there is another example, but it involves doing a prediction. Um, like if I were to just show you this and not, not want you to graph it, and you just explain in words, uh, what is going on from x comma y to this one right here? Um, and then what's going on from this one if you do this transformation, right? So it's about recognizing uh, what sort of effect it's got to have on the shape. Is it going to make it bigger? Is it going to make it smaller? Is it going to move it? Um, or translate it, I mean. Is it going to uh, rotate it or flip it or, or something like that? And also, where is it going to end up? That sort of thing. So if you were to predict this one, Right, we could have said something like um, uh, it's going to translate it in the first one, and then it's going to make it a little bit wider, uh, and then the last transformation, it's going to rotate it, and it's going to end up in quadrant three, or something like that. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope it hope it was helpful. Have a great day.